In this segment, uh, we will look at uh, single phase thyristor converters in their inverter mode of operation. Uh, j just as a review, uh, we have looked at uh, uh, the single phase uh, converters. Uh, assuming uh, that this input side inductance is zero, we can draw, redraw the circuit as shown here. And at the output side, we assume that let's say the current I sub D is flowing continuously. And uh, we saw what happens if uh, we were to replace the thyristors by diodes, what the waveforms would look like. And uh, <coughs> what happens if we put uh, thyristors in place of uh, diodes, then we have an extra degree of control uh, where we can delay the firing pulses for thyristors, thyristor pairs one and two, and pair three and four, and therefore we have control over this uh, input voltage VD uh, by means of this angle alpha here. So we have seen these waveforms. And uh, so what happens if uh, this alpha, uh, you know, we have thought about alpha uh, in the previous uh, segment as between zero and 90 degrees. And there we have this V sub D average to be positive, And we think of this as a rectifier mode of operation. But if we keep on increasing this delay angle alpha, uh, and we measure that alpha with respect to the instant of natural conduction, where uh, these, these devices would begin to conduct if they had gate pulses uh, all the time or if they were diodes. But if so, but in case of thyristors, if we increase that uh, delay angle by, uh, beyond 90 degrees, then what we uh, enter is called an inverter mode of operation. And generally, we can increase this up to 150 degrees or so. We don't want to go too close to 180 because then it leads to what is called commutation failure. So we can see that uh, in these uh, circuits, if I may redraw them like this over here, just by a thyristor symbol, AC here and the DC over here, this is VD and this is ID here. You can see here that in the rectifier mode, both VD and ID are positive and therefore power is positive. It's flowing from left to right. But this in, in this inverter mode of operation, <coughs> uh, where this uh, delay angle alpha has gone beyond 90 degrees, uh, I sub D cannot reverse in these circuits. Okay, so I sub D must stay positive, but this V sub D in inverter mode, I should say positive here, okay? But uh, this V sub D, can become negative in the inverter mode of operation, and therefore the power becomes negative, that is, it flows from right to left here, like this here. So that is possible, provided we have source of uh, energy uh, on, the, on the DC side. And uh, again, the expression for this average V sub D is uh, given by this, uh, proportional to uh, cosine alpha, assuming again that this L sub S is zero. And we'll take that into account later on. And you can see here that when alpha is beyond 90 degrees, uh, cosine alpha is negative. Okay, so it's showing that the average, uh, this DC voltage becomes negative, and we'll see the waveforms in a second. So this is what's going on here. That, uh, uh, you know, this is the instant of natural conduction for thyristors one and two in the single phase circuit, but uh, we are delaying this gate pulse to one and two by this angle alpha here. So uh, there is no choice, but uh, thyristors three and four have to keep on conducting, and therefore V sub D waveform uh, follows minus Vs. So it looks like this, and at this time, uh, when thyristors one and two are gated on, it uh, this current Is certainly goes from negative to positive, and uh, then it's uh, V sub D is equal to Vs, and we get this waveform over here, okay? So in this uh, inverter mode of operation, where alpha is greater than 90 degrees, uh, we get this waveform, 
and you can see if you take the average of this V sub D waveform shown in red, uh, it has a negative value, okay. And that is what we had mentioned earlier that uh, we are able to get a negative uh, value for V sub D and the power flow then is from the DC side to the AC side in this inverse mode of operation. And you can also see how the input current waveform IS, although rectangular as in the inverse mode, <coughs> uh, it shifts with alpha, okay. So that is uh, true in the rectifier mode as well as in, the, in this inverse mode that with respect to the incoming voltage waveform, this IS waveform is shifting depending upon uh, alpha here. So uh, we know that uh, this uh, IS waveform being a square wave has uh, harmonics and uh, these harmonics uh, are uh, inversely proportional to the harmonic order and in addition uh, uh, to real power that gets transferred, uh, there is a reactive power and this reactive power is given by this expression proportional to sine of this delay angle alpha. Again, this is being looked at with L sub s equal to 0. <coughs> so our next task is to see what happens when this inductance L sub s here is finite as it must be in uh, these uh, thyristor uh, circuits. If there is not enough inductance on the AC side, uh, then we should put uh, some uh, external series inductance, <coughs> okay. So, so in this case, uh, this current commutation, which uh, we saw earlier from uh, one thyristor pair to the next on an instantaneous basis, I sub S was jumping from negative to positive and uh, uh, then uh, negative again, uh, that is not going to happen instantaneously because this current IS is flowing through this inductance, okay. And as you know, the current through an inductor cannot change instantaneously. So there is a uh, finite uh, commutation period and uh, during which uh, we will see these waveforms here. <coughs> so uh, let us uh, zero in on the circuit and uh, let us say that uh, uh, this is, uh, you know, in this VS waveform, which we have shown, uh, the, this uh, incoming voltage VS becomes positive at this instant of time, but we delay the gate pulses to 1 and 2 by this angle alpha over here, okay. So till that point, of course, 3 and 4 are conducting, so V sub D is following this minus uh, VS waveform here, but as soon as we uh, gate uh, th thyristors 1 and 2 which are ready to conduct, what happens is that all four thyristors in this uh, circuit begin to conduct and uh, the current which was flowing uh, through 3 here is now going to shift to 1 and the current that was flowing through 4 is going to shift to 2 over here. So uh, during this uh, commutation interval, all four thyristors are conducting and as a consequence this V sub D is equal to 0 here during this interval here, okay. And uh, when V sub D is 0 and also, you know, we, we, we virtually have a short here. So uh, all this incoming voltage Vs is being dropped across this inductor here and that is what is causing the current to shift. Uh, from a minus value to a, uh, from a negative value to a positive value. So if you look at this uh, inductor voltage uh, during this commutation interval from alpha to alpha plus u, uh, you know this uh, voltage V sub s which is also the inductor voltage here, you integrate that and uh, we can say, uh, we can show here that that is, uh, you know, it depends upon the amount of inductance we have and how much the current is. So <coughs> this, uh, this, this exp expression here gives us the volt seconds that are necessary to make this uh, uh, commutation happen. 
and that volt seconds, it's uh, the you know the voltage that is coming across the inductor is here, and it's uh, uh, doing this interval. Uh, that these many volt seconds are being applied across this inductor to change this current through it, and uh, that from this expression is equal to this much here. So that's the area, uh, this red area that I have shown. And uh, that is, uh, a, you know, it's a reduction in the average voltage that would appear across here. If there was no commutation, then this reduction wouldn't have occurred. But because of this commutation, uh, we can say that uh, the average value of V sub D is reduced by this amount, which is equal to this area A sub U. Uh, I'm sorry, area A sub U was this here. This is the area A sub U, but you have to divide it by the, this uh, pi because every half cycle, this that area in volt seconds is lost. Okay, and I shouldn't really call it, be calling it volt seconds, volt radians, because we are plotting these things in terms of omega t here. <clears throat> okay, so so that's the, the reduction in voltage. So the average output voltage in the presence of this commit, uh, commit uh, this commutation uh, due to this L sub s is uh, the expression that we had seen without the, the inductance, without any commutation interval where it was instantaneous. And uh, then we have to divide this term over here. And uh, we can also say that approximately speaking anyway, uh, this uh, angle phi 1 at which the fundamental free frequency component of Is, which is Is1, crosses 0, that's the angle phi 1, and that is equal to alpha, the delay angle, plus half the commutation interval u, because the length of this interval is uh, u, which we call the commutation interval here. And we can also say that, uh, uh, you know, this reactive power here can be given by this expression here. So this brings us to the end of this uh, segment where we have looked at uh, uh, inverter mode of operation for single phase uh, thyristic converters and how uh, this current commutation occurs.